the question of the week from last week, does the Bible mean something different to each of us? What do you guys think? Yes and no. Can you elaborate? Um, no, because the Bible was written with specific, um, <coughs> you know, uh, meaning and intentions, and we can't just turn it into anything that we want it to. The Bible means something specifically. But um, I think each of us can um, get different things out of the Bible, like um, worrying, like the, you know, the passage about worrying. Well, some can use it for anxiety, and others can use it for uh, the basic everyday worries that they have, you know. Okay. Good answer. Anybody else? I just kind of want to add on to what she said. Uh, I mean, yeah, it has one direct meaning, but just as humans, we understand things differently. Mm -hmm. So not everybody's going to see it the same way. Mm. Anybody else? So basically what you're saying, Grace, is, and I don't know if this is the same thing you're taking, that you're saying, you, you let me know. Um, basically what you're saying is that as far as what the there's only one meaning of the Bible, however, there's different applications. Right. So that's yes. what you're saying. Yes. Okay. And was that what you're saying or no? Give or take, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, anybody else have something else? One thing, um, the experiences you've had in life will serve as a bias to how you interpret the Bible. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean that. It means something different, but because of your life experiences, you take it as something different. Ah, okay. Anybody, anybody else or anything else? Were you good back there? Okay. I need to just carry, like, you know those bikers that have, like, those dorky mirrors that hang off their head? Yeah. And they have one of those ribbon. You all right back there? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so when we're dealing with the occult, remember that what I said, that the occult really isn't a religion. It's more of practices, practices that really stretch across a lot of different belief systems. And that's kind of a really generalized definition, but you really are limited with the definition of what is the occult. I mean, it's, it's kind of more complicated than that. So uh, most people in the occult will answer this question as yes. It, the, the, what the Bible says is, is more or less relative. You know what I mean? It, if that means what you what you think it means, that's good for you, but I don't take it like that at all. You know, and this is how they're able to justify different things. Well, you think that homosexuality is wrong, but I don't think so. You think that, you know, the husband needs to do this. I don't think so. You think that um, you have to only serve Jesus. I don't think so. See what I mean? And so by doing this, they kind of give themselves a, a, a more of a lax interpretation of the Bible. You know what I mean? I'm not saying one, one way or another on it. I'm just saying how, how they kind of form this. And you'd be surprised how many in the occult actually um, use the Bible, or I should say misuse the Bible, mm -hmm. and uh, different things like that. So let's look at that. The first thing we're going to look at is actually um, a not really so much – it's kind of complicated. <laughs> it's not really a religion. It's more like a group of religions. or I mean, it's hard to define. <laughs> and it's called Kabbalah. <laughs> um, there's different spellings of it, and it also um, different groups and sects of it will use different spelling. Like there's a Christian, I use that term very, very loosely, <laughs> Christian Kabbalah, and they spell it C-A-B-A-L-A. Then there's uh, the traditional Jewish mystic Kabbalah, and they spell it like this, K-A-B-B-A-L-A-H. But then there's uh, like um, Hermetic Kabbalah, which they spell it Q-A-B-A-L-A-H. Now, I don't know if they're sold on these spellings. I don't know, but it's all basically the same thing. It's just different ways of spelling it. Now, as far as how do they vary from one another, and it, they vary in almost every way. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's hard <laughs> to define Kabbalah. And because of that, we're really just going to focus on the outline of it because there's so many different groups, so, so many different sects of it. But most broadly, you could call it Jewish mysticism. Jewish 
super spirituality. Uh, oh. Jewish, uh, you know how sometimes you find Christians that are into the weird? Yeah. Not the Holy Spirit, I mean the weird stuff. Right. You know, they kind of see demons behind every door and they think this and that. And, right. you know, they're always praying these weird dreams and always like, oh, the spirit moved me. So I had to say this thing in the middle of the pastor's sermon. It's like, oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of what Kabbalah is. It's the Jewish mysticism. OK. Um, don't think of it as mysticism in the way of Pentecostals like we are. Think about it as mysticism in the way of looking for something that's not there. Oh, that feels great. So, as I said, it's a conglomeration of varying beliefs. Um, there's a lot of different, different. Uh, well, I guess you could say differences of them, and so it's it's hard to say. But they do rely on the secret understandings of the Old Testament. Basically, the Old Testament as you know it, you are understanding wrong, because the things in it are metaphors. They're uh, they're not they're not real. They're just uh, hidden meanings with a facade of a story. So for the weak and ignorant minds like you people, um, it just comes across as a story. But for the enlightened mind of the Kabbalist, it has a secret meaning, below that meaning that you're seeing, and you lack the ability to see it because you're not an enlightened individual. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Okay, so. there They do some very much so rely on teacher lineage. Okay, These they claim have been handed down for generations of generations. Like some people say that Jesus was a Kabbalist. Some people say that, you know, so on and so forth. Moses was a Kabbalist. Abraham was a Kabbalist. And so they've been handing down this secret teaching. But here's the thing about Kabbalists. That secret teaching only the select few will know. So there's no way to verify that story. I mean, it's just like the Freemasons thing about the builder. I mean, hypothetically... It could – there could have been a secret society that existed for generations, but there's no proof of it. You know what I mean? Like there's there's no logical reason to believe in it, and that's what the Kabbalists do. They're very, very touchy on this too. Um, you have to have direct teacher lineage. If you are not taught by one of those people who inherited their power from another teacher and so on and so forth, you're not a legitimate Kabbalist. <laughs> legitimately. Legitimately, you're not legitimate. <laughs> so um, – Everybody understanding so far? Yeah. Any questions? Okay. Um, obviously, they claim to have the secret hidden truth, um, just like the Freemasons did. Um, that's why I started with the Freemasons, is because they've got a lot of things that are very similar to a lot of the cult that we're going to look at. You know, these secret teachings, these secret things that have been handed down. And they actually reminded me of a group uh, in the uh, early first century, uh, somewhere around that time, uh, called the Gnostics. You've heard me talk about them before. Um, that they have a lot similar to the Gabalists, you know, all this secret knowledge that only the select few have. It's been handed down, and you know, just stuff like that. Um, but this is also something they both have in common. It's mostly just nonsense. Like their teachings just don't make sense. Um, like um, I don't know if you guys know what Hermeticism is. No. Um, well, it's it's basically I guess you could define it as a philosophy from this guy. Not important. What is important is that um, he very much so impacted the early church as it, as it developed. And uh, one of the ways that he, de that he um, you know, uh, impacted them was in the medieval church. And uh, the teaching as above, so below, the things that happen on, on the micro scale show what happens on the macro scale, the universal scale. Mm -hmm. The things that happen on earth shows what happens on in heaven, and the things that happen in heaven is kind of a it, – it's hard to explain. Um, and I'm not a philosophy teacher. A philosophy is very difficult to teach, so I don't even know how to explain that. But if you're curious about Hermeticism, you can look it up um, online, um, and y you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. It's just something that's really – a philosophy that's really impacted – the world, really, and we don't really even think about it a lot, but it really has. Um, it's impacted early Christianity, the Kabbalists and stuff. So, It is not possible for God to know man or for man to know God on this earth. He can only know uh, what God is not. And that's basically a pretty good um, starting point for Kabbalists. God is not personal for the Kabbalist. He is more of like... Almost like the Hindu idea of, of, a, of a principle or a spark, okay? In fact, uh, we're going to get to this in a minute. But Kabbalists kind of teach that at the creation, 
the Godhead was shattered into sparks that are kind of in the creation. And eventually, we're going to all join together, see what I mean, uh, and, and form God again, or whatever you want to say. Uh, it's, I mean, everybody uses their own lingo to say it, but that's basically the idea. Um, and so it's kind of reminded me of New Age. Um, in fact, I would say it's very similar to New Age. Um, Abraham discovered godliness, but not God, because God is unknowable. So when it says stuff about Abraham, that's not literal stories. Those are all metaphors. They're, they're, they're hidden layers of meaning. Okay? Um, and they find hidden layers of meaning in everything, in, in pictures, in numbers, in uh, names, in everything. Uh, numbers are given special, special meaning, which are then added together with names and just all these hidden, hidden meanings. And you're going to see when I show you the tree of life that they have, um, that there's symbolism in the numbers of the paths and, and the and the pathways themselves. Just hold on, I'll, I'll get. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah. Some Kabbalists discouraged from reading Old Testament until they've been instructed. Basically, what that means is that you don't you won't understand the Old Testament. So why pollute your mind with it until you've been instructed properly in Kabbalism? <laughs> now, not all Kabbalists do this, but um, there are some who do this. And you know, it seems kind of silly to us. Yeah. But for someone who claims to have this, you know, super secret knowledge, I can totally understand why they would say this, you know, uh, because you don't want them to to get their own opinions formed. You saw the Catholic Church do this too. They didn't want the commoners to have a translation of the Bible for themselves because they didn't want them to go off on some strange teachings and heresies. That's a good point. Okay. You don't want your people to go off on. But with that being said. That's not the way you do that. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> you don't withhold the the truth from people. Uh, but anyways, the Kabbalists do that same kind of idea, you know, uh, where or many of them, not all of them, uh, where you know the Old Testament's not going to even make sense to you. So why even waste your time on it until you've been instructed? So uh, this is a quote from um, Michael Lehman or something. I'll I'll get to it in a second. Kabbalah has been shrouded in mystery for thousands of years, and it's called the hidden science for three reasons. One, in the past, Kabbalah has taught only a few worthy, highly developed people from each generation who already possessed certain inner qualities not developed in humanity as a whole until recently. And these inner qualities allowed them to understand and use it, the teachings, um, correctly. So in the first place, it was purposely hidden by the Kabbalists themselves. Two, all Kabbalistic books are written in a way that, um, that uses words that seem to talk about people and things, but in fact not a single word in any Kabbalistic book is talking about the physical world. Basically, everything that's in a Kabbalist book, you're not going to understand it. It's not, you're not an enlightened individual, and this guy is the Kabbalist who's writing this, or saying this, whatever. It's a world of an imaginary world. Or what yes, exactly. Yeah. Wow. And so when you're reading the books, like let's apply it for for the Bible. You're reading about uh, how Joseph is sla sold into slavery. Mm -hmm. That story has nothing to do with actual people. It's about principles, and it's about ideas beyond principles. And in those principles, there's other principles that point to other principles. It's very complicated to understand, and so that's why I don't go real in deep with Kabbalists with, with this with tonight because it. It's just going to confuse you. Trust me. Yeah. I'm saving you the misery. If you would like, um, this book right here has a good summation of the of Kabbalah, uh, Kingdom of the Cults by Walter Martin. Um, but even there, he's going to have a, give a very limited, very limited approach. So, um, <clears throat> and if you don't learn uh, how to read these books from a Kabbalist in the authentic teaching lineage, you simply can't understand them. So what does that mean if you read them and you actually do think that you understand it? You're wrong. What if you come to the exact same conclusion that a Kabbalist would come to without having been instructed? You're wrong. What? Even if it's the exact same conclusion, you're wrong. Yeah, I know. Uh, it doesn't matter how bright you are. All you're going to end up with is a product of your imagination, nothing less. Nothing else. Sorry, nothing else. Um, and three, Kabbalah reveals the purpose and the nature of the system that we call life, and unless a person has a powerfully real and serious need to ask this very question, they can't hear the answer, not even if it's shouted at them. What? Which is why, even if you came to the same conclusion, you would still be wrong. <laughs> yes, uh, Michael Leitman, I was right. Uh, what is the essence of Kabbalah was that? Uh, and so you can... Uh, and when you look, if you want to study this on your own, and you look up Kabbalah or Kabbalism, um, <laughs> you can't just look up Kabbalah because of all the different sects of it. 
Okay, so you're going to have to really spend a lot of time studying it. And you're going to have to ask yourself, is this worth my time? <laughs> um, I answered no. It was not worth my time. So I moved on. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, one of their more influential uh, books that a lot of Kabbalists use is called the Zohar. Um, and it's written, written in what's called the language of the branches, which is basically this hyper poetic language. Very difficult to understand. Um, I was actually going to have selected readings of it for tonight, and I was like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> you can look it up on your own if you're interested. Uh, I think it's a waste of time, but whatever. <laughs> it, 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 it is, it is. I try not to to make fun of them too much while we're studying them. I usually wait till afterwards, but this one is just wacko. Yeah. I mean, it's just out there. I'm already, is that the cousin of the language of the birds? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so they have this thing, um, and, and I believe all Kabbalists have this, called the Ten Sephirot, or it's also called the Tree of Life. Um, it's it's basically the known qualities of God. Um, it's this, I'm, I actually have a picture of it, I'm going to show you in the next slide. It's this, uh, basically this, this diagram, and there's different versions of it. So the, the diagram that I show you is not the Tree of Life, because remember, there's, Kabbalah is a bunch of different sects, right. and they all have their own different things, okay? Some Kabbalists are, are more renowned as, as teachers, and then... You know, either way, there's just such difference, uh, such difference. Um, so the the ten sephirot is studied to determine uh, its effect and to utilize its power. Once again, the idea of hidden knowledge, uh, hidden power, uh, time, trying to tap into that into that realm that is beyond the human, um, which is where all the occult starts out in. Uh, everything is try everything with the occult is trying to tap into that secret hidden power. You know, when you look at really the purpose of things like seances and astrology and all these different occultic <clears throat> ideas, you see very much so the attempt to know what is unknown, to delve into some secret realm, to get hold of a power that is beyond you. Um, and you see the same thing in, in Eastern Eastern mysticism too. So, um, there's I already mentioned this. There's, there's hidden meanings really, literally in everything, in numbers, in in in. There's hidden meanings in the hidden meanings, <laughs> honestly. Like, uh, the ten sephirot is, is, a, is a hidden thing, and then it, each of the ten things has it has its own hidden meaning. And then they have its own name. And then in the image itself of the tree of life, there's hidden meanings in that. And then those go on to add on to other hidden meanings. So it's basically miss, built, built on miss, built on miss. By the time that you get yeah. to the root of Kabbalah, I wonder why any Kabbalist can actually think straight. Right. It's such, like, built on itself that it's... It's yeah. like a circular argument, except that there is no end of the circle. It's an okay. infinite it's argument. Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. It's a very um, ambiguous belief system. Very ambiguous. It has, you have to be brainwashed in order to keep up with it, I guess. You know, it really seems like this one is a, is a brainwashing one. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm, well, it I mean, seems like that. Well, I mean, that's the only way to function is to... Well, it, it's hard to know. Uh, I mentioned this. The Godhead shattered sparks of light throughout the universe when upon creation. I already mentioned that. Um, then uh, I already mentioned this to the, the idea of hermeticism as below, as 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 above, so below, um, as within, so without. Um, the idea that the that the it, that the individual is impacted by and impacts the universe, and the universe is impacted by and impacts the individual. It's kind of that. Um, New agey kind of nonsense. Um, so God is, is is reactionary as we act, and he's also actionary as we react. So yeah. it's kind of this confusing thing. But Hermetic Kabbalah is not doesn't stand for all of Kabbalah. Okay, mm -hmm. that teaching right there is Hermetic Kabbalah. Okay, but um, not really though too because <laughs> I hate to say yes and no about this, but really that's how it is. It's yes and no. Um, because they also do things like uh, um, uh, magic, um, uh, secret incantations, uh, like witchcraft kind of stuff. Uh, so it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of a little more complicated than that. Um, this is one example of the tree of life that I mentioned, Whoa. and this is uh, actually relatively a simplified version. I simplified. Yeah. Do a lot of people follow it? It's hard to know. Because there's a bunch of different sects, and it's not really something that they call themselves Kabbalists all the time. Sometimes they'll just call themselves Jews. Sometimes they'll call themselves Christians. Sometimes they'll call themselves no relations. Sometimes they'll call themselves New Agers. I mean, it's kind of <laughs> it's kind of an all and nothing, and it's just built on confusion. 
Um, and this one is definitely a lot a lot different than uh, other ones. Uh, I just got it because it, it was it was pretty much all there. Um, so there's there's these ten things, and they're all okay. So God, <laughs> where to start? Uh, God is full of contradictions. Basically, He's full of a male and a female counterpart. There's kind of like contradictory contradictory ideas. Okay, like you would think, uh, for instance, for instance, kindness is a woman trait, right? And you would think that like power is a man trait, right? Uh, so that's kind of the Kabbalist God. He, he's full of these um, contradictory ideas, um, and uh, you know, uh, it's hard to know though because he's unknowable. So there's that. Um, and the things on here have secret hidden meanings. The, the number of paths between the different things. Um, on some of them, there's, there's the same uh, amount of pass between them as there is letters in the Hebrew alphabet, which then gives it another uh, meaning and other things. And see what I mean? A bunch of hidden stuff like that. Which, of course, the Hebrew alphabet has secret meaning too. You know what I mean? Like all these things with all these secret meanings everywhere. And most of the times, people are going to actually believe some of the things that Kabbalah say because they claim to be Jews, and Christians, for whatever reason, are so enamored with. Jewishness that anything the Jew said says they'll just be like, hey, let's believe it without even comparing it to the word. You know, uh, and obviously I don't want to sound anti-Semitic, <laughs> but there are there are there is a group of Christians who aren't really concerned with the Bible so long as a Jew said it. If a Jew said it, it takes precedence over the Bible. You know, and and, and you have to kind of remember, well, no, because God speaks and God speaks of higher authority than a Jew would speak, right? Right, God is our ultimate authority, and so you really have to be careful. Um, uh, Jews have a lot of a lot of uh, he, secret he, secret teachings and traditions and stuff like that. Like one one tradition is that King David wasn't actually a legitimate child; he was an illegitimate child from another wife that Jesse had, and that then you know it goes on builds all these stories and everything. It's like, well, yeah, but that didn't actually happen. There's no proof of that happening. That wrote hundreds of years. That was written hundreds of years later. You know what I mean? Yeah. Stuff like it really doesn't make sense. And I could go on and on about this stuff. Like it, it's so confusing. And every time that you think you understand it, or at least this was my experience with Kabbalah, every time that I thought I understood it, I didn't. <laughs> and well, that's because you haven't been taught by a Kabbalah. Well, yeah. Honestly, <laughs> like, and then I got so confused because I tried to separate the differences of the beliefs and the sects, and that was even more confusing. The only one that I have a pretty good understanding of is the Hollywood Kabbalah. And that one's just stupid. <laughs> That's the one Madonna is. Oh, jeez. Um, okay, so uh, there's different, I already said this, there's different um, uh, uh, branches. Uh, there's even a Christian Kabbalah, if you can believe it. <laughs> and there's a Hollywood Kabbalah. I mean, there's literally like so many different, um, but overall we can we can do a little bit of summarizing here. There's denial of biblical truth. That's kind of in all of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, things instead of just being true are, of course, yes and no, hidden meanings, hidden stories, you know, all this nonsense. Um, there's a denial of Jesus. That's pretty much in most of them. Even in the Christian Kabbalah, it doesn't make sense what they say about Jesus. I, I don't even understand it. Like, I would explain it to you, but I don't understand myself. How can I teach what I don't know? Like, it, there's just such nonsense and such, like, Nonsense built on nonsense. Like, it just didn't make sense. Um, and, and the I mentioned this, but in the Hermetic uh, Kabbalah, the acceptance of magical incantations, witchcraft. You know, really weird. Um, because the Torah clearly says to kill a sorceress, to not practice divination, to not go to, go to astrologers and fortune tellers and all these things. And yet, this branch of Kabbalah is like, oh, hey, no, no, it's fine. And it's like, what? <laughs> Anyways... Um, in a lot of it, um, salvation is found in reincarnation or the study of the secret knowledge. Um, but there is no one single Bible that they have, one single hidden book, you know, because each different sect has its own leaders which have their own Kabbalah books, you know, and, and so there's a lot of contradiction in, among Kabbalah. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's basically a denial of sin. I mean, you could say it this way and that, but basically that's what it is. It's a denial of sin. And denial of a need for a savior. Uh, in some traditions, uh, man can become like God, which is more often than not in the Kabbalah thing. Um, in some traditions, uh, people are responsible for their own problems. Like, for instance, the Jews went through the Holocaust because they didn't read the Zohan, or Zohar. They didn't read the Zohar. 
So the reason why they went through that that terrible trauma was it was their own fault. That makes wow. sense. Yeah. yeah. Just stuff like that that's kind of like, well, that's a little bit backward. And just so you don't think I'm taking that out of context, that was actually the Hollywood cabal that said that one, that last part. Uh, Not all of cabal said that. That it is kind of a resounding theme, though, throughout Kabbalah, that everyone is individually responsible for their own problems. And Nicole, while you're having these problems with the doctor, it's something you did. Uh, you know, Gracie, why, why, why you have this problem or that problem is because of this. You see what I mean? It, it's always something you did. Um, so then that takes us to Eastern mysticism and the New Age. And we're kind of looking at them together because New Age and Eastern mysticism are kind of like this. Okay, here's the New Age and here's Eastern mysticism. They overlap each other so much that they're almost the same thing, but they very much so root on each and build on each other. You know what I mean? A New Age definitely owes its gratitude for existence on Eastern mysticism. Now, Eastern mysticism is basically a conglomeration of like Hinduism and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's basically Hindu Hindu ideas, you know, um, and then just adaptations from that. So, um, yeah. So let's look on some things. The the main theme, the resounding theme, you could even say in this, is the focus on the self. Everything in this is about the self. There's a power in self. There's a God within you. There's there's something inside of you that's waiting to be released. There's a secret joy inside of you. There's secret, and you see a lot of Christian teachers teaching New Age beliefs. Okay, I'm like. Uh, my mom even bought a book, unknowing, uh, for Joey, my brother, um, called the the. It was called something like the secret in you or the the power within or something like that by you know some counselor or psychologist or whatever. And basically, it was new age ideas repackaged as counseling. So, what, so I mean, it's kind of like delved into things where you can't just say, "What does this person claim to be?" Because it's not that simple. A lot of people claim to be something that they aren't. Kabbalists, a lot of them don't claim to be Kabbalists. So, <laughs> right. so I mean, you're really left with this questions of mind questions. And this is where it comes really, really important to have the aid of the Holy Spirit who is able to give us that discernment. Definitely. So, um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, everything about New Age is oftentimes about education and self-improvement. That's the most important thing. You can educate away sin. Um, if you just focus on yourself, you can become a better person. We can change the world for the better. We're, you know, basically what Jesus said he has to come and do because this world is so irreparably broken and lost and sinful. Remember how Jesus said that? How he's coming back again? Remember all that? Yeah. That's, that's hogwash. No, don't worry about it. We can all become better by simply joining our consciousness together, by focusing our energy on, on positivity. That's a lot how the Scientologists yeah. teach it. Scientology is really, really influenced by Eastern mysticism, too. It w in fact, we looked at it Scientology as part of the cult, but although it is technically a cult, I would highly encourage um, you to see it as part of the occult. Well, and they have a lot of hidden practices and stuff, too, that I would consider occultic. Yeah. That's why I, I had such a red flag with Freemasons. Mm -hmm. I was like, mm, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> um, but that's really the most important thing. Uh, we are evolving as people, not just as physical beings, but also as mental beings, okay? So if you watch a lot of science fiction uh, uh, movies, they'll kind of build on this. We're, we're growing, we're evolving, we're, we're reaching a place of human intellect where we'll never be. Eventually, we'll grow past our physical bodies, right? Because that's that's everything that New Age is about. You know, we can we can self-preserve here. We, we, we got this covered. We don't need religion. It was ne maybe even necessary at a certain time, but now it's just not so much. If you want, if you choose to believe in religion, that's good for you, but everything ultimately goes the same road. It goes the same, the same ultimate purpose, the same goal. You believe whatever you want, as long as it's positive. Yeah. That's the idea of New Age Asian mysticism. Wow. Um, the, the, their mantra, their, their, their call card is always unity and acceptance. And they masquerade as tolerance, but really what it is is just um, not standing up for anything. There is no standard for belief. And 
If this sounds familiar, it's because it is familiar. This is the same stuff that happened in the Roman Empire, in the Greek Empire, in the Persian... See, I mean, this is the same thing that's happened over and over again. It's just now we've got people who have science. We have science now, so it's like, aha, we figured it out this time. It's the same teaching over and over again. We are all, we are all connected to the divine spark, kind of like spokes on a bike tire. We are all going to the same place. We're all in this together. We're all one people. It doesn't matter what your religion is. It doesn't matter what your differences. We're all one. We're all at peace. Um, and this is just a really resounding theme. And you're going to find it in a lot of a lot of stuff too. Um, truth is relative to the individual. You discover your own path. If it's true for you, that's okay. But that doesn't mean it's true for me. Um, really, there is no such thing. Um, which I know this is a contradiction, but. This is what they believe. Um, there really is no such idea as absolute truth. Everything is relative. I mean, and we're going to get look at this and just think, and even the physical world as you perceive it, you're wrong. Uh, it's an illusion. You know, it's it's not what you think it is. And the, really the only way to find out that inner truth is to find the inner peace within you. You have to empty out your mind and become one with the universe. Um, I'm going to go to the next slide, or? Good. Everybody good? Okay. Hmm. Uh, coexist. You see this on a lot of bumper yeah. stickers. Uh, it mostly mostly comes from New Age. Some people will back this up from a more of like a "you leave me alone, I'll leave you alone" kind of thing. But the idea of coexisting is is actually very much rooted in the whole uh, New Age thing. Um, embrace the parts you like. Diversity is good. Huh. You know, and it sounds good. It really does. Except that there is a standard for life. Right. See, what I mean, and and really, nobody really believes that there's relative truth. People say that they believe that there's relative truth, but they don't really believe that. I'm gonna go and rape and murder a one-year-old, and you're gonna tell me that that's okay because that was my own path. No, nobody's gonna say that. That's just stupid. See, what I mean, nobody really believes that truth and that absolute truth is relative. Nobody really believes that. They think they do, and it sounds nice, and they don't have to feel convicted and guilty. Are you alright? Oh, no, I hate oh. those. I hate those. Do you need anything? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Jesus, like others, is just, they're, they're just prophets. They're not the Christ. They're a Christ. And this is really built on the idea of reincarnation. Okay? Basically, um, an avatar or a messiah or a Christ comes every so often, and in fact, they're waiting for another one to come. Anytime now, there's supposed to be another Messiah that comes. Um, and this is an enlightened individual. There's not one Savior. They're just all enlightened individuals. Buddha and Jesus, they're both just enlightened in individuals. They can all coexist. Even though their teachings contradict each other, it doesn't matter. It's your own path. They found their own inner oneness. Now, you had to find your inner oneness by combining yourself to the inner oneness of everybody else. Or whatever. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Sins are only bad in certain contexts, which I already kind of mentioned. Basically, your society decides what's bad. So homosexuality, for instance, it's only – well, I don't even know if they would say this out loud, but this is their idea. It's only bad if the culture says it's bad, I guess. But then some people would go a step further and say, no, homosexuality is totally okay in every situation. They should have freedom. It's like, well, I thought you said if it worked for them. you know. But then they say, oh, no, no, no. Homosexuality is right in every situation. Well, it's like, well, which is it? Is truth relative to the individual or is it not? Right. You see what I mean? Like, it, So it, it's relative when you're doing something you want to do, but then when somebody else doesn't agree with you, then all of a sudden it's no longer relative. Uh, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know, we have a it, – it surprises me because our culture is very much so – science is everywhere, right? Yeah. But yet our culture is so irrational and so illogical, and they'll believe things that have no basis in reality. Oh. And so cults and the occult is growing because it's like, why why not? Do a little bit of any, everything if it makes you happy. There's no, like, thinking things through. Um, hell is a state of mind. It's not an actual physical place. Nobody really goes to hell. Um, because, remember, it's all about oneness. You're just, you know, negative, man. You just need to clear, clear, your, clear your negativity. Uh, we will all be saved through reincarnation karma. You know, our, our, our works our works are basically our salvation. I mean, they don't say it like that, but that's the belief of karma. You know, the things that we do is constantly building over things that we've done and constantly building over what we will do and just never a peace. It's always about pursuing something that's never attained. 
the teachings clearly contradict each other, but gives false hope, and so they, they kind of cling to it because there's a hope. And for a lot of people in the world, there is no hope, and so any kind of hope is like, hey, I'll just cling to that. Um, yeah, tell me when you guys are done with that. Good? Okay. You have to empty your mind and discover the inner peace, the inner oneness. I already mentioned this. Uh, yoga, for instance, uh, is focused on emptying the mind and channeling inner energy. So that brings up the question, is there such a thing as a form of – can you do ho yoga as long as you're not doing the meditations? And I fully believe no, and I'll tell you why. Is because the, the stretches themselves are specifically designed by a Hinduist – to open up the chakras, your 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 energy to let them flow. Right. Usually done to a mantra like the Om mantra that everybody knows. You know, Om. Yeah. It's that's part of the emptying the mind process. So in my opinion, no, I don't think you can. No. I don't see how there is a possibility. And that's another thing is in our cultures they don't see standards. They only see um, ways of letting themselves off the hook. So a lot of Christians will say, okay, so I just won't meditate and I'll still do the yoga. And it's like. You don't get that, do you? Like you see a lot of Christians nowadays own idols. Well, I don't worship them. I just think it's cool. It's a piece of history. I didn't know what yoga meant until you said it like last time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, uh, you see a lot of Christians with things like um, – with charms and, and bracelets and whatnot, like um, the dream catchers and stuff, you know. And uh, it's all about that, you know. Stuff that the Bible clearly warns about. Literally the first commandment in Exodus. Thou shalt not have any other gods besides me. What that means is not don't worship other gods. Don't own gods. Don't worship gods. Don't 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 focus on study the other gods. Like leave the other gods alone. Just let whoop. And what people have then translated that to in English is don't have don't worship anything else except for God. Okay, so I can own idols, I can do all this stuff, and it's it's fine. It's like do you not read the Bible, or are you just looking for an excuse to ignore the Bible? Because that's what the Bible actually says. Well, it's like throughout the Old Testament, you know, God told them, you know, when they went in and overtook places and stuff, get rid of the idols, yeah. get rid of everything, yeah. you know? And uh, in fact, in one of the prophets I was reading, I don't remember which one, but he said this, you worship God and Molech. Mm -hmm. See, it wasn't a thing about Oh, well, they weren't worshiping God. Some of them were genuinely worshiping God, but they weren't worshiping God alone. Yeah. And one of the key things that the Old Testament shows us, the New Testament too, but it's really in the Old Testament, is God is very jealous. Right. He doesn't share glory. He doesn't do that at all. <laughs> that's a, that's It's not even on his radar to, to let that pass. Um, you don't need the Holy Spirit because we all have the divine within us. You don't need a spirit of discernment by the Holy Spirit because you are holy, right? You are part of the divine. You are part of the God. And so you really just have to look inwards, and that's fine. Uh -huh. I, I mentioned this. It's a basic rehashing of ancient occultism. I don't expect you guys to write all this stuff down. Uh, astrology, auras, uh, automatic writing, clairaudience, clairvoyance, crystals, divination, ESP, medium, and numerology, out-of-body experiences, parapsychology, psychic, psychokinesis, telekinesis, pyramid, power, seance, spirit guide, telepathy, doctrines of the devil. They're all doctrines of the devil. But I'm going to break these things down to show you what these things are. Okay? Because I mentioned a lot of those really, really fast. And I want you to actually understand what they are. So the first thing I mentioned, um, astrology, everybody kind of understands what this is. This is um, seeking to know the future by means of stars, by means of planets or um, phenomena like a hurricane, for instance. And you actually feel, see a lot of Christians nowadays who are into the astrology. Like, for instance, um, John Hagee with his, with his um, blood moon stuff. He can tell you when the end is because of blood moons. And I know he didn't directly say that, but he was implying too strongly for my liking. Uh, that one guy a couple weeks ago who said that he figured out there was going to be that Saturday. It was like, I think, three weeks ago. Yeah. That, that, that He found it out, and it's like, okay, well, A, that's astrology, and God told us not to do that. And B, the Bible clearly said that you're not going to know. So you're wrong on two counts. So I mean, you can't claim to be a Christian and still practice astrology. It's not something that... God condones. 
He's not okay with it. Um, the second thing there is auras. Everybody basically have, has an energy power to them or, or vibrations. Uh, New Age is real big on vibrations. Everything kind of gives off special vibrations and stuff. And so colors, right? Yeah, and colors. Auras are mostly about colors. Um, uh, but everything gives off vibrations. And uh, so when you're becoming one, you're, you're tuning your vibration to the universal vibration. Does that kind of make sense? So, uh, but auras, yes, there are there are, there are colors. Uh, if you remember on the village, the blind girl actually saw auras, which is a Hindu idea. And Night Shyamalan is a Hindu man, so yes, he had Hindu ideas in his in his movie. Um, let's see what else. Uh, automatic writing. This is where you go into a trance and you write something that you don't write. Now we know it's a demon who writes it using your hand. You know, but they would say that it's a spirit that's you know whatever um, spirits that take over their bodies and write through them. But we know it's demons. Um, Claire audience is where you. I always get Claire audience and clairvoyance mixed up. Claire audience is where you hear audible voices that nobody else hears. It's just you hear it. Clairvoyance is where you see. Yeah, see things that somebody else doesn't see, like a dream or a vision. Okay. Now notice how some of these come really close to what the Holy Spirit works through. Is right. Christians can see dreams. In the book of Daniel, God gave dreams to Nebuchadnezzar, for instance. So God can use those means, too. And so it's interesting to see how, how the occult will try and mimic. mimic. And yeah. Chuck last week brought up the thing about Exodus, and I just laugh at this every time. So Moses goes, and as God told him to do, he turns the, the, the Nile into blood. And so then Pharaoh's, helper, or Pharaoh's uh, magicians go, and they do the same thing. It's like, yeah. Thanks. We already have a problem with the blood. Could you turn it back into water, please? <laughs> and here's the thing. It says that all the water in Egypt. So they had to go dig a well and draw the water out from the well to get fresh water. And so they did all this work to bring fresh water to him just for him to turn it to blood again. What? How does that help the situation, magicians? And it says that the blood was in the Nile for 10 days. Oh Ten days. <laughs> That's nonsense, man. If you were really powerful, why not turn it back to water? Right. Right. And then, like, I think it's uh, they keep they keep repeating the same curses that God's giving on Egypt, like um, turning their rods into a snake. <laughs> why are you doing that? That's just a stupid thing to do. They keep repeating the curses until finally uh, it, it shows. This is where this is where the the magicians drop out. They they get boils on their body and they're like, okay, I'm out. <laughs> And you don't see them for the rest of the ten or uh, yeah ten plagues of Egypt. You don't see them again. <laughs> they're just until the very end. They're with they're with um, they're with Egypt and they're like, look, I don't see what you're not understanding. Egypt is destroyed. Let the Israelites go. Just just <laughs> let them go. It's, it's time to move on. <laughs> yeah, it's time to move on here. Um, anyways, um, uh, crystals. Uh, there are and I, this this is serious. Okay. There are special rocks. <laughs> My special rock. I found a hard rock. Energy or vibration qualities exist in certain stones. <laughs> My special rock. <laughs> Seriously, though, they really believe in that. Okay. They get a fortune for those, too. Right? No, but seriously, they do. People are willing to pay a lot of money. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember this. I wasn't even born yet, but they had this um, New Agers had this big uh, meditation collective thing that they did in the 80s, and they were joined at special uh, holy places to the New Agers. Santa Fe, New Mexico, was one of them. Yeah. You guys know about this? Uh -huh. Happened in the 80s, and uh, there was a place in Arizona. There was a mountain in California. There were all these different places that they were they were joining and collectively becoming one together, and this was supposed to usher in the new age. And of course, it didn't. Um, but you know, uh, divination, which is basically a whole lot of different things: tarot cards, palm reading, ruins, crystals, uh, ga uh, crystal gazing. I mean, omens, um, scrying, palmistry, which is where you read the um, read the marks of the hand. Um, uh, reading the tea leaves, uh, all these different things, that's all divination. That It's an encompassing term. So when the Bible says, do not practice divination, it's talking about these things. Because divination isn't an actual act itself, it's, it's an encompassing general term. Um, let's see, what else? ESP, that stands for extrasensory perception, which is, I, I, didn't, I always have a hard time understanding like what this is. 
the ability to know things through premonitions that are not common to other people. Mm. So, like, for instance, Nicole goes to Arizona, and nobody knows, but she has a heart attack. And I know Nicole's had a heart attack. That would be uh, ESB. Mm. Okay? Um, a medium, which is, we already know about this, uh, someone who contacts uh, spirits on the other side. Uh, numerology, uh, this is where numbers and certain things have certain meanings, and so then you have to find the secret meanings. Like uh, a movie that came out with Jim Carrey, 23, where the the hidden number 23 is everywhere. Now, that movie was really attached to the cult, but it's 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 – the same idea, I guess you could say, where like there's he, 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 hidden meanings. What day was it that you, that you got pregnant? Well, it was this number with this, so you add the dates of the clock together and then the time. And you see, I mean, basically, I don't understand how it's that much different from astrology. It really isn't, in my opinion. But whatever. Um, out of body experiences. This is exactly how it sounds. It's also called astral projection. If you watch Adventure Time and Avatar: The Last Airbender, there was on both of those. Uh -huh. um, it's on a lot of a lot of things like that. But these are kids shows. Like how how oh, how yeah. sucky is that to start brainwashing kids about the New Age and Hindu and stuff when they're just kids? Like let them enjoy things. Like remember the good old days of like Donald Duck and Mickey, Mickey Mouse, Mouse and stuff. I mean, let's keep it simple here, guys. Yeah. The anvil drops on the coyote. I mean, that sounds like a good idea. Let's yeah. stick with that. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, but these are out of body experiences. The, the idea is that you can. Um, well, I mean, it's it's exactly how it sounds. You leave your body, and you're able to travel through the astral plane. Plane, obviously, um, or not obviously, but uh, oftentimes you have a spirit guide who will uh, tell you secret things there and take you to secret places. Um, this is also on 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 the New Age thing shows and stuff. Um, parapsychology, which is basically the study of occult powers, it's an academic form of occultism, I guess you could say. So, like, if you watch the shows, like the ghost shows and stuff, I believe that would constitute parapsychology, or at least some of the people on the shows would, yeah. would constitute and parapsychology. Yeah, some of them are actually trained specifically in parapsychology. Yeah. I mean, there's some shows that I'm just like... Yeah, like there's uh, that, creep, that, that creepy lady, short lady, she looks real creepy with the glasses. I, I swear I thought she was uh, like a, a monster or a golem, and then I found out it was actually a woman. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? But anyways, uh, she she's considered a parapsychologist. Um, psychics, everybody knows what this is. A medium and who uh, a person who acts as a medium and who uses auras, numerology, divination, clairvoyance, clairaudience, oracles, left the aureus p as a means for communicating. Um, now, some people aren't actually psychics. Some people just pretend to be, and some people are what's called a mentalist. What that means is that you're – it's kind of hard to define. You're able to manipulate people into doing what you want them to do through suggested – or uh, what's it called? Suggestive something. Basically, let's say I have two things in my hand, and I want you to pick one thing. I'm going to say certain things and act a certain way so you pick the one thing over the other thing. Okay. Or um, through the way you carry yourself, I'll be able to guess things like whether you're first child or second child, that kind of stuff. Okay, there. There's an actual science to it, and it, it's it's on probabilities and, and and averages. And most of the time, they'll they'll be right about the stuff that they say. That's called mentalist, though. That's not a psychic. There's a big difference. Um, psychics claim uh, supernatural knowledge. Mentalists sometimes they claim they claim to be a psychic, but oftentimes they'll just be a a, a really good uh, manipulator. Um, psychokinesis and telekinesis is basically the same thing. We're able to to do things with your mind, move things and whatnot with your mind. Um, if you're familiar with X Men. Uh, Jean Grey, yeah. she was Dr. Grey. She was, or, uh, or uh, ha, yeah, no, um, uh, yeah. Professor X. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 whatever. Um, he, I believe, was also that. Uh, I think there was another one too. But anyways, you get the idea. Um, pyramids and pyramid power. The idea of the triangle has a lot of secret hidden meanings with the New Agers. Uh, it's it's a symbol of 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 what's it called? Um. um it's like a a sacred is kind of like a sacred symbol, a sacred object. So pyramids have special special place to New Agers. Uh, the triangle has special significance to them. Um, what else? Uh, seances. This is where you call someone forth from 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 the dead, usually in a circle. You gather. Sometimes you'll light candles, different things like that, um, to call forth someone from the dead. Uh, a spirit guide. That's pretty much how it sounds. There's um, the New Age teaches that spirits, either independent spirit beings or spirits of the deceased. Dead relatives, for instance, make contact with the living to assess them through life. They teach you things. They help you get through your problems in life, that kind of stuff. Um, telepathy, uh, nonverbal communication directly from one mind to another. 
Um, which is why, um, if you notice, a lot of the things like I, I brought up that possibility of, of demons using the idea of demon uh, of alien, aliens in the future. Well, a lot of the things people are looking for in aliens are things that are exist in the occult already. The telepathy. Remember, because they're going to evolve so much that they can communicate through, through their mind without speaking. Yeah. Telepathy mm -hmm. is there. Mm -hmm. uh, some other things. Uh, spirit guides. A lot of people see aliens as a possible spirit guide. The ability to telekinesis. It's just the ability to move things with their minds. They'll be super powerful. Um, Out-of-body experiences where, like, um, you know, they'll be able to... Well, I mean, that one kind of goes without saying. So, you know, different things like that. And if you really look at this, you can see how a lot of what people are looking for in aliens. Now, I'm not saying that the Antichrist is going to be an alien. I didn't say that, okay? <laughs> I'm just saying that people are looking for something that the Antichrist can easily manipulate. Right. That's all I'm saying. Um... So, and they're all doctrines of the, of, the, of the devils, and they've been rehashed a thousand times. It envisions one planet, one people, harmonious peace, prosperity, and hope for the world, which come through the uh, creativity of positive thinking. Harmonizing yin and yang forces, awakening the god within, or balancing spiritual energy through occult practices. Now, um, if you remember what the word says, it actually um, m mentions the possibility of, of a new age um, revolution in the world. Um, when it says, you know, people will be saying, peace, peace. Well, that's all that New Age says. Oh, we, we can have peace and togetherness. And then it will come on them very suddenly. And all these things, will, all this restriction will come on them. You know, we're physical things that are beyond their power. You know, um, like like hurricanes. Like people always talk about, uh, you know, a big earthquake hitting California. Even non-Christians believe that there's going to be a big earthquake that hits California because... It's already shifting so much. It's just a matter of time before something happens. Right. I mean, yeah, the, yeah. with the San Andreas fault line and all these different yeah. things, it's like we're just honestly waiting for it. It's just it's going to happen, mm -hmm. uh, which is what confuses me about living on California. It's like if even non-Christians are saying it's a ticking time bomb, <laughs> you might not want to live there. and Just throw that out there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the fact that they have scientific proof that it's okay. Right. I mean, I think it's there's happen. like... Plenty of places out in like Wyoming and stuff. Where right. Populate. That's where I'd go. Exactly. Uh, and the thing is, California is already on on its way. Like it's already moving north. Uh, if you wait about a million or two million years, yeah. it'll actually be up by Alaska. So there right. you go. <laughs> if it doesn't, you know, just something else. But uh, I, I don't know if I already mentioned this to you guys. Um, it won't sink into the sea though when, when a big when a big earthquake hits because the plates aren't like that. No. It'll it'll go far north. It'll be pushed north. There'll be a lot of destruction, but it, it it's not gonna. I mean, that's not how the plates work. Um, it's not an east-west plate; it's a north-south plate, so it'll push it north. So, anyways, uh, but it is it is a, an assured thing. It's just a waiting th waiting game. When is it going to happen? Um, uh, and then also, they use a lot of uh, images. Have you guys ever seen uh, a cross like that? Yeah. That's actually doesn't stand for Jesus. No. It's actually part of the uh, Egyptian belief system. It's called an I hope I'm saying this right an Ankh cross. Uh, it's an image for uh, reincarnation and the afterlife. Um, it, it's actually a very ancient... Are you talking about the, the, the top part? Yes, yes. Oh, okay. It's actually a very ancient symbol, too. And New Agers will use this, and they'll even call it a cross, but it's not really a cross. It doesn't stand for Jesus. It doesn't stand for the atoning blood. It doesn't stand for any of that. It stands for the idea of, of being a better world, being a better... Uh, you know, obviously, they all see different symbols in it, but it's basically the idea. Um, they, they use new inclusive terms, and they oftentimes will even use Christian terms, you know, like salvation and savior and that kind of stuff, but it doesn't actually mean what the words mean. They give it special meaning and stuff. And, and they do this, obviously, to repackage it. Like yoga, for instance, is Hindu meditation. Well, that didn't sell. So he actually renamed it yoga so that Americans would accept it, and it worked. <laughs> you know? Right. Boy, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, saviors and avatars. Uh, an avatar is basically an incarnate, incarnate deity. Basically what Jesus was, that's what an avatar supposedly is. So on Avatar The Last Airbender, the avatar, he was, uh, the airbender, he was actually... Um, one of the guys, you know, one of the guys who was incarnate, became flesh, okay? Um, and, and it's nothing really special. Avatars are reincarnations. that They'll come again, you know. Uh, and, and we're all, essence, we're all part of the divine, um, you know, you could be a secret avatar and you just wouldn't, wouldn't know it. Um, Christ, Jesus is not the Christ, he's a Christ, um, because he found his inner oneness. And you can find your inner oneness too. <coughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Um, 
So saviors, there is no such idea as a one savior. It's kind of like a whatever floats your boat. Uh, right. Belief in a Jesus, not the Jesus. Uh, I talked about this a couple we a couple weeks ago when I was uh, preaching at church. Um, that they'll say that they believe in Jesus, but which Jesus do they believe in? Because they don't believe in the biblical Jesus. Mm. You know, they believe his 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 life was different. They believe his character was different. They believe all these kinds of different things. Mm. Um, and a lot of people will, will be sincere in good intentions, and they'll just get misled, and they'll get lost in that mi in being misled. And so a lot of times people in the cult don't know – understand what I'm saying. A lot of big names in the New Age occult and in the other occults and whatnot, they don't know that they're wrong. You see, we have a clear mind, and we compare things to Scripture, and we say, well, how could you possibly eat something so, so stupid? But what does the Bible said say? I sent a deceiving spirit among them. They genuinely believe. And so that's why I push so strongly. You can't rely on your personal feelings. I really believe this was from God. What does the Bible say? Okay, I believe that God does speak to us, but I absolutely believe he doesn't contradict his own words. No. His own words. So let's keep things in perspective here. And a lot of people claim this. God told me to get a divorce. God told me to get married. God told me to have a kid. God told me to quit my job. All these things, like, I highly doubt that. Highly doubt that. I mean, some in some instances, it sounds more or less believable. But in every single situation, it's like, eh, I don't know about that. Why would God tell you, a Christian, to marry this non-Christian person? Yeah. <laughs> well, because I can get them saved. I can get them saved. Uh -huh. Oh, boy. Even though his word says not to. Even though his word says not to. Um, and obviously they just rely on feelings. Uh, so even Christians get misled into the cult because oh, yeah. they're sincere and they, they, they have good intentions, but they don't follow the Bible because they just go by feelings. Mm -hmm. um, enlightenment and what is dormant inside, you know, what, what lies asleep inside of you, you have to find that enlightenment, find that center. Um, really, I'm trying to different. I'm trying to find different words to say the same kind of basic idea because that's new age idea. It's it's very um, all inclusive, very broad. Um, some more things here. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna laugh at this, but a lot of um, uh, new agers actually believe in Atlantis or another place called Lemuria, which were both lost. They're physical places and can be reached through different practices like seances, not seances, um, uh, meditations and whatnot. Uh -huh. You can act, your spirit guide ma might actually be from Atlantis. Okay. That's how you use it. That's what you want to hear. Honestly, yes. And here's the thing. People don't get this. I've seen ghosts. I've seen my dead ancestors. Demons will be whatever you want them to be. They don't care as long as you believe. So on these ghost shows, are those really ghosts? Are those really haunted places? No. They're demons who are being what they want. What you want them to be. See what I mean? Or sometimes there'll just be people playing on it. Sometimes there will be people, you know, who will see shows that, you know, it's just them playing on it. And sometimes they just work themselves up. And sometimes it's just coincidence and that kind of stuff. Well, that's the thing. Your own imagination goes wild, yeah. yeah. Actually, South you Park... Get a thought in your head and you just start going crazy. <laughs> and South, South Park has an episode that makes fun of this. There's these... Uh, I forget why, but they get these TV people to try and find a ghost or something. I forget why. But anyway, it's not important. The funny part is they all come and they're all, oh, oh I'm really scared. And they're, they're all getting themselves worked up and they're all with their camera. And then like one of them backs over into a cup and it spills over. They're like, oh, did you see that? Did you see that? Oh, oh. And then he all starts peeing. He's like, oh, I'm peeing. There is something. No, no, he doesn't say I'm peeing. He's saying, there's something appearing on my pants. It's wet. It's wet and it smells like pee. There's something appearing in my pants, guys. And he peed himself, you know, but it's it's that kind of stuff. And sometimes that is absolutely true. Sometimes people just work themselves up. Um, the age of Aquarius. This is is a new age is coming um, where it's going to be a, a global changes on the earth, which will result in world peace, that kind of stuff. Um, Avatar already mentioned this. This is a Sanskrit word, um, which um, for a Hindu deity. But it says here. Uh, but in the New Age, it could be a spiritual uh, leader or a spiritual teacher. Um, channeling. This is basically where the demon speaks through you. I mean, let's call it what it is. Um, it, he says it in here. Trans channeling is the most popular vehicle in which a spirit takes over the body of a subject and, and speaks through it. But that's basically it, a demon speaking through you. Um, chakras. Um, are basically, it says here, chakra is a Sanskrit word for Hinduism that represents seven energy centers. Some people say that there's only five energy centers, though. 
there's a difference of that. One thing, um, I, I've heard of, of a lot of Christians that will watch Dr. Oz. Mm -hmm. He's real big on, like, chakras. And he is like, very much so a New Ager. Middle very Eastern much so. Stuff. Yeah. And he tries to blend it in with medical yeah. stuff. And, yeah. And so you have a bunch of yeah. naive people watching Dr. Oz and they're like, that sounds right. Uh -huh. It's a scientific thing. There are chakras you, you know, in us. How you, if you're suffering with these problems yeah. and stuff, if you get this different chakra things that in tap into, into the chakras, different uh, different stretches too that release that specific chakra. Exactly. chakra. And then you have some New Agers who are real big into um, um, what's it called, where you do it with your hands. Um, uh, car, car, oh, oh no, like the the. Like massage. Yeah, yeah, and and they center their uh, their chiropractic works on the on the chakra energy like points, the pressure points, like the stuff. energy points and stuff. Now I'm not saying that being a chiropractor is evil or even going to the chiropractor. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying sometimes New Agers will use that idea to focus on the energy points of the chakras. So, anyways, um, yeah, basically inner energy, that kind of stuff. Christ obviously is not uh, the savior like we know him. It's a cosmic consciousness. Only one of many Christ, that kind of stuff. Everybody is a Christ. You just have to find your inner Christ. Um, so then I'll, I'll attach with that, there's a, a, they use a, a bunch of different terms. Universal oneness, Christ consciousness, cosmic consciousness, God consciousness, higher consciousness, enlightenment, uh, raising the individual consciousness to a higher level. They All kind of the same term, but you just use in different ways. The Christ self, the God self, the divine self, the sleeping God, the, the, the inner divine, the, the spark. And just a bunch of different words for the same basic concept. Then there's collective consciousness. I already mentioned this when I said that day that they all joined together in, in oneness or whatever in the different places around the world. Uh, that would be an example of this. A moving force in the universe. They, they can they can create you know a change in, by by uniting their oneness with the with the oneness. Right? It's kind of hard to use terms because it kind of just whatever. And I I want to try and avoid either or extremism. Okay. Because, okay, so how do I want to say this? I teach some things that are similar to to Buddhism, I guess you could say, but there are key differences between me and Buddhism. So I want to kind of focus on that, okay? Hold it, let me kind of get to that, because I don't want you guys to think that I'm teaching something weird, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Guru is basically an enlightened teacher. Uh, right here, harmony and balance. You have to balance the, the yin and yang forces. There are opposing forces in the world, and you have to find your balance between them. Now, I oftentimes teach about uh, the middle path and, and, and kind of a balance in your life. And I'm not talking about this kind of a balance. I'm talking about you don't have to go to extremism on stuff. Right. You know what I mean? You don't have to. Be, for instance, the Bible teaches this too. Not everybody has to completely abstain from alcohol, but that doesn't mean we have to become alcoholics. No. There is such a thing as drinking in moderation. Some people can do that. I personally don't do that because, A, it's too close to the danger zone to me, for me. Danger zone. Danger zone. Uh, but also because it runs in my family and also because I think that it's a poor witness to others. But do I believe that just it, it, drinking is necessarily wrong? Not necessarily. Obviously, you'd have to ask why are you doing it, that kind of stuff. But ultimately, I'm past condemning people who drink. Um, I still believe the principle of do not become drunk still fully applies to these people, but I don't think that a sip of wine is going to kill you. Honestly, I don't. See what I mean? It, avoiding extremism, that's what I'm talking about. What New Age teaches with the middle path is that there's actually forces and you have to become one in your inner one. I don't, I don't think that at all. But I think that sometimes we, we think that there's an either or in life. Why does it have to be like that? You know what I mean? Either you have to be a workaholic or you're a lazy person. Or you don't like work, but you do it because it's necessary. Right. I don't like working. I'd rather stay home all day and do nothing. Yeah. That sounds fun to me. But, but Jamie, is, <laughs> there, is, there is a middle path between the extremists. And that's what I'm saying. Um, I've kind of taken, I guess you could say I've taken Buddhist ideas and terminology and applied it to biblical teachings. Does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. So if it sounds like I'm saying something Buddhist, it's because I've borrowed some of their terms to describe something that I don't see in the church. I don't see Christians taking a middle path on things. I see them thinking that they have to take extremes all the time. 
You know what I mean? It's either I only listen to gospel music, and I literally buy C uh, CDs just so I can burn them, or I listen to every single music of everything. It doesn't matter if it's demonic or if it's it's, it's like okay, you know, there is there is a middle ground here. <laughs> like me personally, I don't follow the follow the guideline of Christian or non-Christian music. Because there are some Christians who I think don't sing very good Christian music, and there's some non-Christians who I think have some very good music. Yeah. And you really have to be discerning. You know, I there's a band that I like, Classic Crime, that released a new CD that has all kinds of cussing in it, so I didn't buy it. I have a problem with that. And obviously he said a hundred times, we are not a Christian band, I am a Christian in a band. But I don't believe that a Christian should be writing those kinds of lyrics. Mm -hmm. I can't support that, so I didn't buy the CD. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. Discernment. That's my take on it. Some people don't have a problem with cussing in their music. I don't know. I, I when Lincoln Park released that one CD with remember uh, and they had a bunch of cussing on that one. I was like, eh. yeah, like their third CD. Yeah. yeah. I was like, eh. I mean, it's a decent CD, but it's not worth owning. You know, I if you have cuss words going through your head all day, it's gonna it's harder not to cuss yourself. Uh oh. And to me, it's harder in music. Than if you're watching a movie or yeah, something. Yeah, like it that. is because it you repeat in you more. Yeah, and it gets catchy and you repeat the lyrics and stuff. Yeah. And also you, you yeah, yeah. So uh, there is a difference there. That's the that's the big difference, okay, between me. So just so we're on the same thing, I do not teach Buddhism and I do not teach Hinduism. I borrow some other terms. If you have any questions about something that I say and it sounds like before I said about um, resolving the war in in your heart before you can. You see, I remember that I, I talked about that, and, and, and I borrowed that from from Chinese philosophy, um, and, and I think that they are true on that. If, there, if there's a war in your heart, there's going to be a war outside. A lot of times, people have personal conflict because there's something wrong in here. But I believe that the Bible says it too, and so I just borrowed their terms to say that we need to resolve the things in our heart. We look for all the things out here to make us happy, but the truth is, we need to be content in Christ, just like the Word says. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? So I, I want to clarify there. I do not teach New Age. I do not teach Hindu. I do not teach Buddhism. I borrowed some of their terms for some biblical ideas. Okay, <laughs> all right. Because <laughs> I know it sounds kind of. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so holistic health. This is as nonsensical as it sounds. Um, you can find basically what he said about Dr. Oz. Dr. Oz teaches holistic health. You can make your mind well, which will make your body well, which will make, you know, basically the as above, so below teaching. And there's the things. Sorry, go ahead. a lot of Christian teachers that yeah. teach that as well. <laughs> yeah, which brings us back to the as above, so below thing. Basically, the, the realities are, are realities on all the scales. For instance, if something's true of your physical body, it's true of your spiritual body. And so you can find healing in your physical body through holistic healing. In your, see what I mean? Holistic. The whole person. Holistic health. Mm -hmm. that makes sense? So, um, illusion or maya, I already talked about this. The physical world is an illusion. Um, with different vibrations, you have to become centered on that vibration to find your oneness. Uh, the karma, we've talked about that a hundred times. Um, he talks about something in here called Kundalini, and we're not going to even touch on that. We're just going to skip past it. Talked about the Buddhas and the Christ and the avatars. I already mentioned all those. Uh, a mantra is a word given to a yoga initiate for meditation. So in Hindu teachings, it, it's, it's for meditational purposes. Um, the Aum, that's a very, real popular one. It's even in, in a lot of movies. When you realize this then, remember Lion King? The, yeah. the, the monkey yeah. with his hands going like this, yeah. sitting in the position, going yeah. Aum. Yeah. That's actually... Crazy, right? Uh -huh. It's crazy how oh God, it, yeah. it's everywhere if you just look. That new um, movie, Utopia. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. It's, in it's in there too. Yeah. yeah. And you don't even think about it, and uh -huh. you see it all the time, you know, and it's just crazy. Right. Um, meditation is a big one uh, that they talk about. It's basically a, a way to find self-enlightenment, to find your inner avatar and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's how you how you become one with the universe. Here's the thing: the Bible actually teaches meditation, but not like this. Right. It doesn't teach meditation in the way of emptying your mind. It teaches meditation in the way of processing what you read in the Bible. After you read, read, don't just walk away. Meditate on it. Think on it. That's what it means when the Bible teaches about meditation. It doesn't mean to empty yourself. Keep what you've read in your mind and think about it throughout the day. Th think about it. Let it apply to you. Let it let it let it let it uh, dwell with you. I guess you'd say. Um, oracles and ruins is another thing they talk about, um, New Agers talk about. Um, it's basically 
Um, you remember in the Bible the Urim and the Thummim that they decided that they figured out God's will by throwing the throwing them the lot casting lots and stuff. It's basically like that. I mean, let's simplify things here. Um, I already talked about the terms that they use: uh, universal oneness and oneness. Okay. Um, the plan. Okay, the plan is uh, is a term used by theosophists who believe that a hierarchy of ascended masters is about to send a Messiah, Maitreya, Christ, or Buddha, whose followers will unite to usher in the plan for a new world order. Um, in fact, this is kind of what New Age stands for. New Age, what? The New Age is coming. The Age of Aquarius that's coming. See what I mean? Um, see, did I cover all that? Yes, I did. Um, okay. Oracles and runes, I already talked about that. Um, planetary vision, we already, I already kind of mentioned that. Rebirthing, okay, this is basically, I, this is so ridiculous, I'm going to actually quote him on this. Rebirthing is a process where the subject undergoes a hypnotic or other forms of memory regression to experience his birth once again. Yeah, what? They even have it some of their weird things, like they have, like, do you remember that episode of Malcolm in the Middle where they did the Burning Man? They Maybe. went to the Burning Man thing? Maybe. But they had, like, this tent set up. There was, like, a birthing tent. It was, like, you go through this thing that's supposed to represent, like... Maybe I And, like, they're pouring water on you and everything. And wow. It was gross, but... That's gross. <laughs> yeah. It's like on Monk, that one episode where he's trying to chase the bad guy, and he goes to the skull replica of, a, of, a, oh, yeah. of the vaginal canal. And he's all going like this, and he can't go through. He's like... Aah! Basically, that's what it is. They have, like, these hippie conventions and stuff. Yeah. Like New Age conventions and stuff. Well... This is connected with that, uh, but this is actually where you go into hypnotic trance. Um, oh. There are rituals like what you're talking about, but what I'm talking about is actually a, a hypnotic kind of thing that they put you in to help you find those hidden lost memories. Uh, and wants I, to experience that? Right? I don't want to remember my mom's part. I don't oh. want to do that. Uh, anyways, uh, there's another form of this called regression therapy. This is where you basically get in contact with your past lives, your, your past uh, essences, uh, to help okay. you resolve your inner conflict. For instance, if you're having panic attacks now, it's because of something that happened in your in your past lives, and you have to regress in, 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 in those things to, to, to find the answer so you can resolve it. Um, yeah. <laughs> see, reincarnation, you guys already know what that is. The process of rebirth and that kind of stuff. Uh, therapeutic touch, or it's also called Reiki healing. Um, I already mentioned this, the, where, you, where you heal people through touch. Um, hands are laid upon the participant for healing. Um, very similar, it sounds a lot similar to Christian teachings, um, but it's completely different because it's not the Holy Spirit working through people. And the power is actually supposed to be in the touch to not the Holy Spirit, so... Um, regression therapy, I already mentioned that. Um, vibrations or vibes. Ever heard somebody say, you're giving me seriously bad vibes? I'm getting bad, bad vibes from them. This is what they're talking about. Basically, everybody has, um, because matter is illusion, everything is illusion, uh, and everything is emitting these vibrations, um, there's some people who, are, well, I'll just read this. Spirit and energy are said to be forms of vibration. The highest vibration is God or the universal oneness. Low vibrations of spirit form the illusion of matter. The new age goal is to get rid of oneness of matter illusion through reincarnation or otherwise so everything can be spirit. So if everybody, and if somebody has a bad vibe, they're, they're not channeling their inner oneness. They're, they're, they're negative. Yeah. Even a lot of yeah, um, it's it's uh -huh. it's kind of like if someone's giving you bad vibes, it would be they're, they're focusing on the negative thoughts, not the positivity. Yeah. So if somebody, for instance, was preaching it's homosexuality, they'd be giving out bad vibes because they wouldn't be condoning the universal oneness, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the yin yang polarity, I already mentioned this about keeping the keeping it in balance. Harmony and balance of the two opposing forces. Now yoga actually means in Sanskrit union. How does how unsettling is that? The word actually means union. Union with what? <laughs> union. Uh, its goal in Hinduism is to make the subject uh, one with Brahma. Uh, You're literally uniting yourself with with a false with one of the gods. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The name itself is union. Not great. I'm not gonna lie, it's not great. Um, but obviously New Agers won't say that. They'll say you're becoming one with the universal oneness. Um, so we're about done with this. Therapeutic touch, I already mentioned that. 
Don't get involved in occultic things or delve too deep. Do not study occults too deep. Okay, I cannot say this enough. You will get stuck in it. You will get caught in it. It'll be it'll be something that that uh, affects you. And Satan will definitely prey on you. Don't ex don't don't be surprised if you start studying the occult and you start having nightmares. Don't be surprised if you start getting involved in these kinds of things and you start having having day what are they called? Uh, I think it's just called daymares, but it has another name too. You know where you see things that aren't there and that kind of stuff. Right. Because really, honestly, demons are just waiting for you to try and find out about them, and they're mm -hmm. totally on it. And that's why I think Paul said, you know, be immature about about the things of the world. Be immature about about evil. But in God, be mature. In, in spiritual things, be mature. Um, it will be a trap to you no matter what your intentions. A lot of times people will study the occult and get really into the occult from good intentions, and it'll just end in bad places. Um, don't ever try to contact dead relatives. Don't ever try to do these kinds of things because Satan will get his foot in the door and he will not let go. Well, you can you can win. Christ is the victor. Right. But it won't be easy. It won't be something that, ah, oh, it's not a big deal. Even God says, this is a big deal. Don't do this. Um, so let's kind of give a little bit of balance to everything that, that, that these different – uh, people have taught. First off, God is separate from creation, but he's not unreachable. Mm -hmm. He's not unknowable. We can know God, but he is not part of the creation. Those are two distinct things. God is uncreated. Uh, nature is created. See what I mean? They, they reside in different dimensions. God does not reside in our dimension. You can travel through space for the rest of time, but you will never find God because no. God does not exist in the physical dimension. See what I mean? Right. Hell doesn't exist in the physical dimension. He, these these realities exist as extra dimensional activity, mm -hmm. and demons reside in an, another dimension. So when you try and do something, it's like you're opening a door into that dimension, and the demons will just come and they'll just play with you. So have all kinds of fun. <laughs> they love getting the attention on them. They love that um, because it's not on God. So anything like that, they'll be okay with. Um, we cannot reach God in our own strength. We cannot reach the Godness. We can, you cannot reach the inner righteousness. In fact, the Bible talks about people in very negative terms uh, basically we're fallen we're sinful we can't do anything to heal ourselves um, we're, we're we're rebellious we didn't even ask to be saved we're so sinful that we didn't even know that we needed to be saved you know all those different things that the bible goes on and on showing how evil we are when we had the choice of either obeying or disobeying with no sin in our in us we still chose to disobey god without the, without the temptation, without the, the, the sin in us already. And then it just went downhill from there. We started murdering. We started started taking advantage of people. We started doing all kinds of immoral things. And the Bible got, uh, documents that very well. Even the righteous people are do, do things in the Bible. Noah, who went and, and gets drunk, and as a result, ends up cursing his grandson. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, bad things happening, guys. Bad things. Anyways, um... And we can't find God in us because in us there is nothing good. When the Holy Spirit comes in us and makes us his temple, then we have something good in us. The hope of glory, which is Christ in us, right? Isn't that what Paul writes? Christ in us, the hope of glory. But uh, we do not need to empty ourselves but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Never once in the Bible does it say to empty your mind, to empty your – to become one with this or that. Holy crap, it's late. Um, but to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Man cannot become God. He is dust and sinful. I already mentioned this. Jesus is the Christ, the only Savior. There is no reincarnation. God's standard is the standard. What God sa says is right is wrong. That is what's right and wrong. Uh, reincarnation, what you are created at in your in, in your mother's womb, and when you die, that's it. There, the next thing is the judgment, and then either go on to heaven or go on to hell. Um, um, but the Bible answers a lot of these things with the occult. One of the things that it clearly talks about is if anybody says that Jesus is not the Christ, and if he did not come in a physical body, and if he's not actually fully God, it says that he is the Antichrist. He has the spirit of the Antichrist. So. Uh, and it says a lot of different things like this. It says that, that Jesus is the only way of salvation. I mean, we could go on and on and on about how the Bible addresses this. And we really have a lot in our talk about the, the cults. So any questions on any of that? Guys, I am so sorry that we are getting out so late. Like, I will do my best next week to let you out at 8. Not right. not near 8, at 8. Uh, I'll give you guys the question of the week as soon as you, you are finished writing things down. There, there were no questions. Okay. 
The question of the week, if you just do it for fun or didn't know that it was wrong, is the horoscope really bad? And I want you guys to actually think about this, okay? Actually think about this. One thing I've noticed, too. This isn't about this, right? Because you have to save it for next week. Not, not directly about this. No. Okay, yeah, go ahead. One thing I've noticed, too, is um, you see a lot of... Christians who will, like, share New Age ideas and stuff on Facebook. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, can you give an example, though? Because, like, it, it sounds good and stuff. And, um... Like, like, stuff about... I don't know if this is necessarily New Age itself, but, like, like the things they share about, like, you're gonna find money today. Oh uh, no. You know? Oh, and yeah. and just stuff that's really yeah. 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 Anything else?